Hi there, my name is Bree Jarvis from Telefonica. I am here with Dirk Alborn from Hyperloop Transportation Technologies. And first question, first things first, um, what is Hyperloop Transportation Technologies? So, well, when we talk about the Hyperloop, it's um, imagine a capsule that's filled with people that's hovering inside a tube. Okay, inside this tube you create a low pressure environment. So the capsule can travel inside this tube, very similar to an airplane that goes in high altitudes with very little energy, very fast. So imagine going from Los Angeles to San Francisco in 36 minutes. That's incredibly fast. Yes. <laughs> and much better. <laughs> okay, why did you decide the Hyperloop? Why? Well, so when we started out, we actually started out with um, Jumpstart Fund, which is a crowdsourcing platform. Uh, Elon Musk at the same time has proposed the project and said that he didn't have the time to work on it, but he wanted someone to pick it up. Uh, Jumpstart Fund is a platform that um, builds communities around ideas and technologies in order to make them into successful companies. So um, we put it on the platform and the community was overwhelmed and uh, really loved doing it. So we put together a small um, team company and um, said everybody who would like to join the company work on it in exchange for a stock option please apply we had more than 200 applications got 100 engineers together and started working on the feasibility study the hyperloop in itself is um, it's revolutionary so imagine that uh, if you look at the train industry for example it's a very very old industry it's a dinosaur industry um, they haven't really changed in the last 200 years even the newest developments so when we talk about maglev and high-speed trains were invented in the 1930s um, they're still building the tracks based on um, the size of the butts of the horses just to give you an idea so it's a really it's a really old industry and um, we always say that you know traveling sucks we want to make it suck less, so we want to make it an experience again. Um, not only with the Hyperloop, but overall, really, you know, solving a lot of issues. Where more and more people are living in cities, are living in uh, metropolitan areas. So we are spending more and more time in traffic. So we really need to solve those issues, and we need to find a way to do it in a way that we use alternative energy and, um, you know, help our planet to move forward in a green way. Wonderful. So my, that kind of leads to my next question. Um, so what problems do you think Hyperloop solves in a nutshell? <laughs> so the biggest one is that there's actually no ra passenger railway system in the world that's profitable. So all of them are subsidized by the government. Um, our system is profitable after eight years. So uh, that's, a huge, that's a huge difference. But as I said earlier, it's really about um, getting, bringing people closer together, um, being able to live in one city, work in another one, or live in a nicer place and within 15 minutes be in the, in the center of the metropolitan area. So um, currently, where are you in the process of developing the Hyperloop? Um, we're starting construction beginning of next year in Quay Valley, which is uh, in California. It's between Los Angeles and San Francisco. It's uh, it's called Kings County. It's going to be an eight mile, uh, sorry, an eight an eight kilometer, so five mile um, track, uh, full scale. And uh, by 2018, 2019, we um, plan on opening and um, moving around almost 10 million people a year. Amazing, amazing. So what obstacles have you faced thus far in the production of it? So our whole company, as I said earlier, is um, created by people that came together. And um, everybody's working a minimum set of hours in exchange for stock options in the company, and they're all over the world. Um, that was a challenge, because something like this has never been done before. Um, the technology of the Hyperloop is already existing. I mean, we obviously we, we created some patents and went and found um, technologies from national research labs or um, but basically from a technology side there, there are no real challenges anymore. The problem was really to get those people motivated, 
uh, engaged, um, create teams that actually work, that move forward. And uh, it's working amazingly, but those were, I think, the biggest challenges. Because if you you can imagine right now, we're over 400 people. And, um, you know, it's, a, it's becoming a really big company. So you need to make sure that everybody knows what they have to do, that everybody knows wh who they have to respond to, that they have their objectives, that they know how to move forward and get things done. So, as you mentioned, um, the people who are working on this, the engineers, uh, rather than being paid a certain salary, they get stock in the company. How do you think that benefits Hyperloop as a whole? Well, I don't know if you have a company, but um, obviously if you have people that work in your company because they believe in your project, they are completely 100% yeah, dedicated, they're passionate, they don't uh, do it for money, but they do it because they believe they work better. It's also the best way to, uh, it's the best hiring process ever. Obviously, there's going to be a moment where we're going to start hiring people. Uh, we already know who are the best people that are working relentless and doing a great job, even without getting paid. So now imagine putting those people on full time. Um, it's a huge difference if you have people that are dedicated. So you can hire anybody, but... Um, you know, if, I think every entrepreneur knows the difference. Of course. So going back to um, your original company, the Jumpstarter, um, what do you think from that company you have taken into Hyperloop techno or tran transportation technologies? What do you think ha from that company has benefited you now? So, you know, they're connected. So Jumpstarter runs Jumpstart Fund, and Jumpstart Fund is a crowdsourcing platform. And Hyperloop is um, one of the first and biggest projects of the platform. So um, everything we're learning in Hyperloop, we're applying in Jumpstart Fund for other entrepreneurs. So we're building tools. We're um, making sure that you know we we have what what is needed in order to do these kind of things. So it's um, it's it's uh, it's it's a little bit. Um, beneficial on both ends. So obviously Jumpstart and Jumpstart Fund has created something that then Hyperloop is doing, but it's really almost a case study. All right, so what does Elon Musk, Elon Musk think of your development of the Hyperloop? So Elon is not involved in, uh, in the company and the project. He, when he first came out with, uh, with the idea, he said that he um, was too busy with Tesla and SpaceX. He wanted someone else to pick it up, which we did. Um, he's now supporting the community by building a small scale track for open source competitions, uh, where we hope that we, um, you know, some great new technologies or some great new concepts might actually come out. So it's, uh, it's great that he's supporting it. Here. So, as you may know, the technological and economic feasibility of the Hyperloop is questioned in ways. What, what are your thoughts on that, of people questioning, is it possible? Can it happen? I mean, it is possible, it can happen. We have all the numbers, we have all our technologies in place. Um, it's always funny when you hear people talking that look at it for a week or for, for, for a day. Um, saying that it's not doable. In general, I say everything is doable. Um, there's always several ways on how you can do something. Um, nobody really knows the way we're doing it, so they can't, um, they can't judge. It's not um, like it was used to be in the white paper initially. That's two years ago. Obviously, in two years, a lot of uh, development has happened. And it's not about making it the way it was in the white paper, but finding the best solutions, finding the, um, the best ways on how to achieve the goal. And the goal is to create a new transport system that gets you fast from point A to point B, with very little energy, is completely powered by alternative energy, and has a very low ticket price. And um, those are the goals. Now, the technologies you're using and how you're approaching them, that's a different thing. So obviously, for example, the capsule is much bigger than initially thought because it has to work for someone who's two years old as much as for someone who's 80. Um, the, the, the levitation technology has evolved and a lot of other areas. So nobody really can, besides us, can evaluate that. And um, I mean, we're getting ready to, to build, so 
you know, they, they will see it very soon and it's doable. Exciting. <laughs> so, uh, what are, or early this year, you mentioned at the Pioneers Festival that you were looking into actually making the Hyperloop free to travel on. Can you kind of expand more on that, explain a little more on how you hope to do that? So, first of all, um, the problem there is really that today millennials, um, they're not used to pay for anything. Right, everything is free. Um, free being a bad word, actually, because free doesn't necessarily mean uh, mean you don't make money. It's actually the opposite. So we are looking. What all all I was saying is actually that um, if we find a way to make more money, the more the passenger rides, then a ticket is not the right thing to do because it would be counterproductive. Then you would take a ticket and. Um, use it to regulate demand so if there's a lot of demand you have a ticket price and you pay if there's no demand it's, it might be free because we're making money in a different way so if you think of video games who uh, when i was a kid i had to pay for them and they were quite, quite expensive today they're free but the companies are making way more money than they used to do uh, if you think of facebook or google which uh, give very large infrastructures for free and make massive returns. Those are really the, the things you have to think about. So how can you generate different uh, ways of, gener uh, how can you generate income in different ways? So. Wonderful. So what do you think makes Hyperloop Transportation Technologies a different type of company? So as I said earlier, the, nobody has ever done anything like this. We are depending on the um, definition of startup you use, we're the largest startup in the world. We have over 420 people that are working in exchange for stock options. We have very large Fortune 500 companies that are part of our team. Um, everybody's working in exchange uh, for stock options just with passion. And um, that makes us different. We are working with the community. We're, we're using crowdsourcing. So normally a project like this is being done behind closed doors. So there's a new metro line, there's a new train line. You hear about it and maybe they tell you it's going to cost probably $20 billion, but that's it. You don't know anything else. For us, we, we say, hey, do you have an idea? What do you think about this? What do you, you know, do you know anybody? Do you, you know, do you have an opinion? Um, help us. So we actually, you know, we have over 20,000 people that participate in these crowdsourcing activities and they're sending us information, they're sending emails, they're doing reports, they come up with ideas and a lot of our even technolo uh, te technology ideas are coming from those people or came from those people. So um, that's, that's what makes us different. I think that today it's way more important to have a community. Right, so people that give you their ideas, their insights, their opinions, that are your brand ambassadors, rather than knowing one guy with a checkbook. Um, you can be a smarter company by doing this approach. That makes us different. Almost like the uh, by the people, for the people. Getting a little... Yeah, it's... If you know... Uh, if you're familiar with open source, uh, open source is... I'm a big fan of open source, it's great, it works awesome, um, but it has a couple of drawbacks. If you want to build a commercial company, open source is very difficult. Um, with the model that we have created, you can use all the you can have all the advantages of open source by still creating a company that has uh, an IP value, because rather than just giving everybody license, you're giving people ownership. And um, obviously they're there, they're also there when you might need money because they know how hard you're working, the progress you're making, they're, you know, they're following you. So those, that's, I think it's a shift in, that's happening in the world, that really communities become more and more important. I think, what are, so to kind of finish up, what are the next steps for Hyperloop? What are you looking at for next? So right now in this moment we're um, in the permitting process, so we're getting all our permits to start construction beginning of next year. Uh, we are, the teams now are working on alternative solutions in terms of materials, in terms of construction processes, even technologies. So we are constantly evolving. As I said earlier, we're looking a lot at um, the overall travel experience. So um, how do you engage when you're in the Hyperloop? How do you 
how do you get to the Hyperloop, what's the first and the last mile. It has to be as easy as pushing a button um, and you get to your destination and your luggage arrives and everything connected. So we're, we're trying to build an infrastructure um, where then other startup companies can basically um, attach themselves and um, you know build out. So my last question for you is, what is the best piece of advice that you have ever received? in the business spectrum. <laughs> the best piece of advice I've ever received in my life and my, I mean, you know, I get, I get a lot of advice every single day. I don't, I don't think, I don't know if there's um, a best one, but... Uh, What's um, something that you've carried around with you that you've kept in mind when you go on new ventures? I mean, in general, for me, it's um, you know, I don't, I don't want to regret things. If there's something that I feel is the right thing, I'm, I'll, I'll be doing it. And um, life's too short. You know, you have to, you have to have fun. Um, one thing that I learned, which is probably one of the most important part for building a company, is that you have to ask. So you should always ask people, how can I help you, and tell them how they can help you. Well, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure to talk to you and learn more about this. So thank you.